Hi, I'm Mort Cooper, your host on Change Your Voice, Change Your Life. In studio with me is uh, the famed um, writer, columnist. Dr. John, columnist Dr. John Curtis, um, who is the co-author of the book. What is the title of it? Uh, we're, uh, this is Conspiracy no, Reality. That's the subtitle. Oh, okay, of the show. The book yeah. is called Curing Hopeless Voices. Spasmodic Dysphonia. Well, it's treating an yeah. alternative to Botox. It's an alternative to Botox because and Botox appears appears to be close. I think maybe you could actually say that they do have a monopoly in the field right now. Oh, they do. Can you say that? Yes, Allegan, the maker of Botox, has. Because what other option is there besides Botox dysphonia. at this point? Yeah. What other option is there? Uh, basically, none. They run the field, and they fund uh, organizations such as the National Spasmodic Dysphonic Association. Aren't there antitrust laws? on uh, the treatment and uh, they have handouts which uh, the medics give uh, across the country and perhaps around the world. Yeah. But I mean, aren't there laws against uh, monopolies and antitrust legislation? I mean, Botox is claiming an exclusive, almost an exclusive uh, treatment. There is a competitor for doing Botox or something like Botox, but uh, they have a basic monopoly from what I know and what I hear. But my understanding is in your field that Botox isn't approved to, to treat the strangled voice uh, by the FDA. It's not approved by the FDA directly. It's an often or off-label drug, which means that they have never gone to the FDA, uh, which is, how do you define the FDA? Well, that's the Food and Drug Administration. Okay. They have not gotten direct approval. You have to go through phase one, phase, phase two, two, and, and phase, phase three, three trials. They have not done so. And, and how are they, they able to I, use this drug? Well, here's the point. It's an orphan drug. Once they use it for face or whatever else they're using, they can use it for anything else. But they for don't anything? have to report negative outcomes if it's an orphan or off-label drug. So they don't. And the state-of-the-art treatment of choice is believed to be Botox for spasmodic dysphonia. And even though there are serious side effects from it or ineffective outcomes, contrary to what they're saying, how effective it is, from my experience clinically, it is not uh, that uh, effective. Uh, all too often, it's ineffective. But they don't have to report the ineffective outcomes because it's not a direct approval but by it's the not FDA. approved and usually when a drug is approved it meets two criteria did you know that well it has to be reported well a mm -hmm. a it has to be safe mm -hmm. okay has to be proven to be safe mm -hmm. b it has to be proven to be effective mm -hmm. well they're claiming it's it safe has bo effective. has botox in your mind as a treatment for spasmodic dysphonia met those two criteria of A, is it safe, and B, is it effective? I have uh, questions about that, and I challenge their statement. It's, uh, it's effective, not only in that respect, but I have seen serious uh, uh, consequences of... Of uh, safety, a drug safety issue? Yeah. Okay. Right. So but you don't believe that Botox for the treatment of spasmodic dysphonia, the strangled voice, is either safe or effective? I question its reliability from my clinical experience. I question its uh, safeness. Uh, we had a young lady on the Fox News Network who said uh, she had seri serious consequences from Botox for SD. Uh, I have heard that what before. What about John I've Fondel? Uh, yeah, he indicated that it was He a, said he was bench pressing 350 he had pounds. He was at a major medical center. Before receiving yeah, Botox injections, and then he reported here on this show. Mm -hmm that after receiving the Botox injection, by the way, he said it was not a bee sting. Yeah. He well, said there's it was a, a recent study out that says it's not a bee sting. He said it was horrendous, yeah. horrendously painful. Yeah. But apart from that, mm -hmm. we're asking two things. Mm -hmm. Is it safe and is it effective? Now, Fonville reported on this show mm -hmm. that he was bench pressing two, 350 pounds before his Botox injection, and afterwards, he couldn't lift his thumb. Mm -hmm. He was weak as a cat mm -hmm. after the injection. Now, a very well-known wife, I mean, that, that's a heck of a claim to fame, a mm -hmm. wife, mm -hmm. but forgive me for the sexist implication here. Mm -hmm. Her name, uh, well, her last name is Metavoy. Her husband is a well-known movie director. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's Sharon Metavoy. I think that's her name. She received Botox on an off-label use. Now, she received treatments where they injected her in her temples for, I believe it was migraine headaches. Mm -hmm. 
and she became permanently disabled, according to her claim. Mm -hmm. She couldn't function. Mm -hmm. She couldn't uh, engage in the most basic activities of daily living, mm -hmm. like putting her, going, bathing, showering, mm -hmm. fixing food, doing any basic skill. She was permanently disabled as a consequence of Botox that were injected into her temple region mm -hmm. to control migraine headaches. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as I know, Botox is not approved by the FDA as safe and effective for treating migraines, mm -hmm. but it is a tr approved for furled eyebrows, mm -hmm. the lines between the brows from an injection in that area. Now, the interesting thing about your field is that but I... That was I, a court case and it was settled against the Metavoice. Well, I, I think it was settled out of court, but I, I don't no, know. Not if, that I know of. Well, in any case, whatever, whatever it was, uh, you, you have an issue with um, the, those two aspects of it, whether mm -hmm. it's safe or whether it's effective. I don't find it anywhere near effective as what it's being brooded about. Well, they've said it's 99% effective. I don't find it uh, anywhere in that category. I see these patients, I hear from them in email, I talk with them by phone, I record them with their permission, and that uh, position is uh, uh, somewhat uh, uh, inappropriate, if I may say, quite appropriate. But Okay, so that's when, as far as I can tell. Here's another question. Yeah. Do you believe, based on the clinical experience that you've had, mm -hmm. patients who come into your office and report their experiences with Botox, you have no direct experience with Botox yourself, do you? No. Have you ever been injected with Botox? No. Do you ever have any intention no. of being injected with Botox? No. Okay. So you have only anecdotal experience and clinical experience with other people who have had Botox injections. Yes. With respect to your field. Yes. That is for treating their strangled voice. Right. So the question is, for, uh, is if you do not see the efficacy of Botox because your clinical experience through these uh, clinical case records of these mm -hmm. patients and their stories to you is that it's not effective in treating the strangled voice. No, it's not as effective as the uh, drug company would like it to be or makes out to be. They have their own view of what's effective. Okay, but let me, let me go, let me, let me uh, follow say. up with this. What I'm asking is on the basis of what you've seen, what do you think the chance is that Botox could ever be approved to treat spasmodic dysphonia? If the criteria that the FDA uses mm -hmm. is it must be safe and it must be effective. Well, it's an interesting question. It's challenging. I think the courts would have to decide that in the FDA. But when I mean, I, just on, the, just, on the, the, just speculating, conjecturing just a little bit, we don't have to go that far. But wouldn't it appear, just as a, a lay person who doesn't mm -hmm. work for the FDA, mm -hmm. that if they use the criterion, two criteria of safety and effectiveness, we don't know about safety mm -hmm. other than what we've heard and what you've experienced with other patients. You, don't, you can't attest to whether it's safe or not. No. But what you can attest to is that it has not worked in a number of cases with patients that you've treated. All too many cases are not uh, talking about the positive outcomes for Botox okay. or SD. So given that, wouldn't it be reasonable to infer based on if the FDA uses the criteria of effectiveness or efficacy mm -hmm. is that Botox will probably not be approved for treating spasmodic dysphonia ever. That's a possibility. But there's another situation that really should come to the fore, and I think this is the issue. I report cures for 35 years and more. I have peer review.